Okay, so let's start thinking about how to solve some very simple exponential equations. Those are equations where the unknown is actually in the exponent. We've looked at things like, you know, x squared minus 4 equals 0, but there the unknown is sort of the base. It's x squared. Now let's take a look at what happens when the unknown is actually upstairs as the power. So in some simple cases, for example, look at this. 2 to the x equals 4. Well, some of the cases you can just sort of look at and figure out what the answer would be. For example, what do I have to raise 2 to in order to make it equal to 4? Well, the answer would be just 2. So x must be 2. Okay, not hard. But let's use this very simple example as a template for how to actually do the harder ones. So one technique that works is if we can get the bases to look the exact same, then the exponents would have to be the exact same. Now right now this is a 2 and that's a 4 and they're not the same. But notice that I could write 4 if I wanted to as 2 squared. Well now the bases are the same. So if I know that 2 to the x equals 2 to the 2, since the bases are the same, that means these must be the same. So that means x must equal 2. So there I get the answer that we already figured out beforehand. I did it by converting everything to the same base. And that actually will work when these things are base compatible, let's say. For example, how about this one? 8 to the x equals 2. Well, let's see. Uh, what could I do here? Well, ideally, I'd like to make these bases the same. Well, that's just a 2. This is an 8. Can I make an 8 look like a 2? Well, let's think about that for a second and see. Uh, yeah, I guess I could, because 8 is just 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So in fact, I could write 8 to the x as 2 cubed to the x. And then what about the laws of exponents here? When in doubt, write it out. If you check, you can see that 2 cubed all to the x, what do I do with the exponents? I multiply them. So I see 2 to the 3x power. So 8 to the x is actually the same thing as 2 to the 3x. Now, what do I know? I'm setting that number equal to 2. So if I set this equal to 2, then if the bases are the same, the exponents must be the same. Well, there's an invisible 1 exponent here. So I see 3x equals 1. So if 3x equals 1, if I divide both sides by 3, I see x equals a third. And so that must be the answer. And we can check it by taking a third and putting it in here. What is 8 to the 1 third power? Well, remember, 1 third means cube root. And what's the cube root of 8? Well, indeed, it is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So in fact, this method works whenever you can actually get the bases to, to be the same value. Let's try another one, by the way. Here's one. How about 8 to, the, uh, 8 to the x, that's an x, equals 4. 8 to the x equals 4. Now, this seems a little bit trickier, because how do I write you know, 8 as a 4 or something? I don't know how to do that. But I could write everything in terms of 2s. So I could write this. We just saw that's actually 2 to the 3x. And I could write this as 2 to the 2. And now the bases are the same, so the exponents must be the same. And so therefore I see that 3x must equal 2, which forces x to be 2 thirds. So the answer must be x equals 2 thirds. Now, well, let's just check and make sure that really is OK. All I've got to do is plug in 2 thirds as the exponent. So what's 8 to the 2 thirds power? Well, let's think about it. The, the 1 third power means take the cube root. The cube root of 8 is 2. But then I've got to square it. And 2 squared is 4. So this actually checks. So getting things to be in the same base when you can do it turns out to be a powerful technique. A couple more. How about this one? I'm going to try to scramble things up a little bit here. 1 third to the x equals 27. Now this seems a little bit stranger. So how would we do this? Well, let's think about this. First of all, how could I write 1 third to the x? I could write this as 3 to the minus 1 power. And 3 to the minus 1 power, all raised to the x power, would be 3 to the minus x power. 
So this whole thing is just 3 to the minus x power, and that equals 27. Now 27, is that 3 to something? Well, let's see. It's 3 times 3, that's 9, times 3 is 27. So this actually would equal 3 cubed. Now the bases are the same, so if the bases are the same, that must mean these things are the same, which means that minus x would equal 3, or x would equal negative 3. So x would equal negative 3. Is that the right answer? We can check. What is 1 third to the negative 3 power? The negative sign flips this, so I see 3 to the 3, and that equals 27. So in fact, this does check. So in fact, here, x would equal negative 3. All right, one little follow-up on this one, just to see if I can stump the band. Here we looked at 1 third to the x equals 27. What if I flip the rolls here? x to the 1 third equals 27. This would not be, I would not consider this an exponential equation because the unknown is now actually a variable. But I just want to show you the difference between saying 1 third to the x versus x to the 1 third. What's the answer here? Well, here I would just cube both sides. And if I cube x to the 1 third, I just get x. And if you cube 27, 27 times 27 times 27, that's right, you know what it is. It's 19,683. So here, x equals 19,683. Here, x equals negative 3. There's a big difference between 1 third to the x and x to the 1 third. Be careful. See you soon.